What is up guys? Thanks for watching as always. Uh, welcome to what will hopefully be a, a cool little video series called Carve Cast Catch. Uh, now I'll do a little bit of explanation about why we started this video series. Uh, when we started this channel, it was pretty random. I used to fish in Europe and Australia a lot and I wanted to do more fishing traveling. Uh, hence the name the Angling Globetrotters. Uh, but we quite quickly after we started up making the videos, or at least uploading the videos, uh, transitioned into uh, lure building videos. Um, kind of had to do with the situation I was in, which is I was actually um, moving to the US for a very good reason. Um, and because of immigration laws and stuff like that, I wasn't able to uh, move a whole lot around, do a whole lot of traveling. So we um, did a lot of lure building videos. Uh, we started off with stick baits, a couple of swim baits, uh, did a couple of videos on uh, how to balance out stick baits as well uh, but overall they were pretty difficult videos to make so they weren't really like a, an entry level lure building um, video essentially uh, we did get a lot of comments for people that kind of wanted to start off with it and I quickly realized that maybe stick baits or swim baits are not the best lures to start off with um, on top of that I've had a couple of people uh, message me fairly regularly on and updating me on how their lure building is going along. Uh, great stuff guys. Uh, recently, a dude from uh, Australia by the name of uh, Connor Burrows, he has showed me some stick baits that he's made and they look fantastic so keep up the good work Connor. Um, and that's also a little bit of inspiration for me to see and uh, find if I can spark some interest with people for uh, starting their own uh, starting lure building because it might always seem quite difficult um, especially with the lure building videos that are around on YouTube uh, quite often they're super high quality uh, swim baits or very difficult looking um, stick baits as well and that might make it seem a lot more difficult than what you have to start off with so uh, hence the video series that we're making right now uh, we'll try to start off as easy as possible so, what we're going to do, uh, in my opinion, the easiest uh, lure that you can make out of wood is a topwater walking the dog lure. Uh, you don't need a swimming lip for it, you don't need a special tool to create a cup face like a popper. Uh, the balancing is super, super easy, uh, very applicable to a wide variety of species all over the world, whether you live in Europe, Asia, Australia, America you can use a um, top water walking the dog lure on a wide variety of species. So, we're going to get started with that. Now, I have some wood laying around as I always do for making videos uh, and building lures, but I wanted to start super easy because I do get a lot of questions about what type of wood I use. Um, honestly, I'll break down wood that you can use in two different parts. One is um, heavy wood, super dense wood. The other one is light wood. Um, but people worry a lot about exact type of wood that you have to use and to be honest if you're making a sinking lure use super dense type of wood that's really heavy uh, if you use a floating lure you can go lighter run of the mill stuff uh, pretty straightforward I wouldn't worry too much about wood type now we had some wood lying around here this is actually pretty good quality uh, I believe this is Maranti wood that I found laying around but I felt like that wasn't an easy enough so we're going with a stick that I found outside just to um, spark the interest of how easy it can be uh, to make a lure. You don't need anything special. Um, now a little bit about the walking the dog lures that um, we'll try to make. We're only going to make one out of this stick obviously. but um, One of my favorite uh, top water uh, lures is the Lucky Craft Semi as I discussed in previous video. I've got a couple of different models. I've got the 100 mil, I've got the 85, and I've got the 65 as well that I bought recently. So this is the 100 mil. They make them bigger as well. Uh, this is the 85, and then this is the 65 that I uh, bought recently. Now, the reason why I show you uh, these lures is because this is kind of like the design that I'm going to base it off on. Um, you don't have to be exact, you can base it on a different top water lure as well. Uh, 9 out of 10 times is going to work regardless, but these have been very uh, good, they've been very easy to use, which is something we always want to go for. Um, especially since we're trying to spark 
the interest of people that might be pretty new to fishing or really new to lure making. Uh, we want it to be a lure that works easy and they can def definitely catch a fish on without going too far into detail of um, putting a lot of detailed carving into it or putting eyes on it even or the paint job. So um, another reason why I'll show you these lures is because these are actually translucent, the two bigger models that I've got here, the 85 and 100 mil. Um, and you'll see, be able to see, I don't know if you can see, might be able to see the rattles that sit inside the lure. It's just rear weighted. They literally sit on the base of the, the tail right here. And that's about it. So that also allows them to sit in the water like this uh, and it makes them very easy to fish, especially since it's got a little bit of a curved belly. Uh, that's just going to be the basic design that we're going for and it tells us a little bit about where we're going to have to place the weights in the bait that we're going to make out of this stick. So uh, hopefully it will work. Hopefully this wood isn't too rotten, but um, we're going to give it a go and uh, eventually we'll also be catching some fish on it, which will also be in this video, so uh, let's get going. All right guys, so uh, as stated, uh, we're starting off with the stick. Now just as a comparison, I'll show you some lures here uh, that kind of fit the shape of the stick, or the end of the stick, <laughs> um, but that's not too important. Um, Obviously, I'm only using the stick as an idea of how simple it can be, but um, if you want to make it real easy for yourself, get yourself a broomstick uh, from um, any place that sells them, Home Depot or something. Um, the end of a broomstick is usually rounded off, so that's almost kind of like a spook. Um, but use whatever you want. This really is to illustrate how easy it can be. So, um, yeah, there we go. So, um, obviously, I started carving here and just kind of want to determine where the curve of the the uh, body is going to go um, but as I said before you can definitely use a straight piece and just keep a, a straight piece design uh, to make it easy for yourself just like a, a head and spook or a, there's a couple of other designs as well um, it is whatever is easiest for you so here we're pretty well uh, getting on to the designing the, the face part um, again I'm not putting too much effort in it because I know that this thing will walk anyway as long as it's balanced well uh, and even that's not too much effort so here you'll see the face design it's really rough and then we're just uh, narrowing down the tail and then we're pretty much done so here we're snapping it off here the uh, body is uh, ready to be kind of fine carved just uh, to get some rough edges away but <laughs> if, if, uh, if just like you'll see um, it will still be pretty rough at the end so uh, just a, an easy start nothing much to worry about all right so that was the carving part uh, took a little bit longer than I thought because the wood is actually quite tough uh, but still done in about 10 minutes um, might take you a little bit longer if you haven't practiced it, but uh, doesn't take long at all. So this is what it's looking like right now. Pretty neat. It's already in a pretty recognizable um, walk the dog lure shape. Uh, now all I have to do is um, sand it a little bit, uh, put some balance weights in, uh, obviously put the hook hangers on, and then we're already done to go test it out. Um, so toughest part is done, which is the shaping. I do have a bit of a, a gap here because of you know the nature of the wood. It's a little bit rotten here and here as well, but I think that's uh, something we can easily work with. So that won't be a problem. Uh, we'll do the sanding right now. So for the sanding, I use uh, 60 grid to get rid of the rough edges, and after the, that, I use 300 grid. Um, but just uh, to show. I don't really worry about the rough edges. Uh, this is looking pretty good already on the 60 grid. Um, I usually only use the 300 if I really want to make sure that every uh, scratch is gone. With this lure I don't worry about it but I'll still use the 300 grids for the sake of it. Just to smooth it out extra. We are still left with some really rough rotten patches as you can see. So um, that's alright. Now here we're just determining where we're going to put the weight. 
I'm not measuring anything, it is just a guessing game to see where the curve is and where the belly is going to be of the lure. That's uh, where the weight's going to go. So uh, we're going to put one split shot in the belly and then uh, one, a couple in the tail just to make it heavier in the tail and that'll be good to go. So here we're just using the Dremel to drill the holes. Um, that's easy as can be. Uh, any drill will do as long as you've got a fine drill bit for the smaller ones. You can use a wider drill bit as well. It just depends on uh, how much weight you want to put in it. Just be careful that you don't put any uh, too much weight in because you don't want the lure to sink, obviously. Actually, it might be an interesting thing to see if it works. But We'll have to look into that. There's a lot of smoke coming out of it because this wood was a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be. But it is what it is. I'll also eventually drill a hole for the hook hanger on the belly. But you'll see that as it happens. It's just a matter of drilling. And you, you also want to make sure that your drill is straight. Because um, if you drill them on an angle, then that weight is going to be sitting in, a, uh, in the corner of the belly and not in the bottom of the belly or anywhere in the middle of the lure for that matter and uh, that's going to determine uh, a off balance uh, lure and probably won't swim as well so um, if you practice it enough you can just do it uh, without measuring too much or worrying about too much but uh, it's just a matter of keeping the drill straight on a straight angle onto the lure. So these are just some small split shots. Um, I think I've even got a little tungsten weight in there as well. That I had from a lure that broke. Uh, broken. It doesn't really matter what you use for weight. Broke for the body that you've got. Um, and again, don't use too much. Uh, we're actually using a lot tight to see this thing out. Uh, the reason why we use a lot tight seconds and uh, it will just kind of fix in the, the weights so well, I'm not too worried about the weights being exposed as long as they're fixed in so they don't fall out that's the key here what you'll have to take into consideration is that the um, sawdust and loctite hardens up real good and that it actually adds a bit of uh, uh, weight to the lure uh, and it actually sinks by itself so it will make the lure sink already put one screw eye in the back here uh, we've drilled an additional hole here we're not going to put a screw eye in there I've already made a wire hanger right there uh, and we're going to put a screw eye in here now as you can see the lure is not very symmetrical also this is not smack bang in the middle uh, but that's also what the reason why we start off with this type of lure because usually we can get away with quite a lot of uh, little mistakes and uh, it's a great opportunity for anyone that's willing to start on uh, building their own lures to um, kind of improve, I guess, on uh, making lures, see what they're doing wrong. Uh, you'll still have a, usually a uh, lure that is uh, able to catch fish for you, regardless of uh, the couple of mistakes that we make in here. So uh, at the end of the day, we don't want someone to start off and put some effort into a lure and then it'd be completely unusable. So. 
you can see it's placed slightly under the nose, kind of similar to uh, the Lucky Craft Semi. However, uh, you'd be, probably be able to get away with putting it right bang on the nose as well. Uh, the only thing is, I'd only do that if your lure is actually straight and not like a banana shape like this one is. But uh, this should work as well. So that one's in. Now let's see if this fits well. As you can see, this is pretty simple. This is just wire. Uh, I didn't have any uh, any more uh, small screw eyes. Otherwise, I'd use that. But there you go. That fits well, I think. There we go. Cool. So I'll have to super glue this in. Uh, this I'm pretty sure will stick regardless. Uh, so will this one. And um, after that we can sort of seal it. Uh, we're not going to use any um, two tiny epoxy because it's a bit more expensive to get. Um, I'm just going to simply use some super glue to do this I think. So uh, we'll see how that turns out. But uh, yeah, let's fix this in first. So as I was saying guys, uh, we are going to fix uh, the hook hanger right after we've uh, fixed in the balance weights. Uh, we'll do it the same way, we'll add some sawdust into the gap of the hook hanger and then we're going to just add some Loctite, which is pretty straightforward. Um, after that, since the uh, Loctite was already running all over the place, um, we're going to make sure that it... Uh, covers the entire body it's going to kind of seep in the uh, wood grain and uh, that's going to help us with um, sealing the wood off from the water real straightforward it's going to be really quick as well don't have to wait as long as uh, waiting for epoxy or urethane to cure so done deal All right, guys, so um, the Loctite has uh, dried up. As you can see, it's not the most aesthetically pleasing lure. But, um, let's see, hopefully that's sharp enough. Um, you still see the wood, oops, wood grain and stuff. Uh, most important thing is that it is now um, sort of like waterproof. Um, the water won't be soaked up into the wood in which the buoyancy will be completely off and the balance with that as well. Um, which is one of the key things to do with when you're using wood uh, for lure building. Uh, but as you can see, it doesn't look like you're running the mill lure, but we did make sure that it was balanced well. Um, that will have, hopefully, well, it should have a walk the dog action. Uh, so we'll do a quick pool test, and then tomorrow we're actually going to test it, and uh, hopefully we'll catch some fish on it. Now, the, the thing that I'm trying to show is that Lure building doesn't have to be tough. There's an awful lot of videos out there on, on YouTube uh, where they show off how beautiful the lures are looking, uh, but at the same time, they don't really show how well they swim, how well they're balanced, uh, how well they catch fish, which kind of beats the purpose of uh, making lures. So um, hopefully we'll catch a fish on it tomorrow. Uh, let's first do the pool test and then uh, we'll go from there. Alrighty, so moment of the truth right here. As expected, this thing walks really, really well. Super easy to use. Sits nice in the water. Uh, creates a bit of a bow wave. Creates a fair bit of disturbance on the on the surface. Uh, perfect. But these lures are kind of foolproof. You cannot really mess these up. If you've got a balance weight in the belly of any piece of wood, uh, you will probably be able to make it... Um, to walk from one, uh, side to side one way or the other. Uh, obviously, the more attention you pay to the placements of the weights, the easier it is to make that lure walk. Um, and you know, as I said, with the Lucky Craft Semis as the example, having that balanced weight in the belly of the tail, uh, the bottom of the tail, sorry, uh, that's going to make it real easy for you. And it will walk extremely well, it will cast very well as well. So um, that's perfect. Looks really good. Um, again, foolproof design. Uh, definitely will catch fish. Alrighty. Now, 
The main plan yesterday was that we were supposed to go fishing for white bass. However, last minute my uh, buddy called off, so uh, decided to give it a try here at Turtle Creek. It's pretty heavily hit, but I've caught good bass on top water here before, so fingers crossed. Might have to work hard for it, but we're always up for a challenge. Plus, if we do catch one on this one, it's uh, definitely proven my theory, so fingers crossed. Alrighty, got ourselves a fish. Oop. That one at first. Man, he swiped at it hard. There we go. On the old ugly, literally stick bait. <laughs> cool. Awesome little fish, very nice colors. Very healthy, beautiful. Let's put them back, eh? It's pretty warm outside. Number one. Other way. Yeah. All right, guys. So that pretty much wraps it up for the first episode of Calf Cast Catch. Um, after that first fish. Um, the battery kind of ran out and um, I actually hooked a really, really nice female on that same lure, that same literal stick bait. Um, she came bow waving out of the uh, corner and um, now that she would have been about about six, six and a half pounds, I'm assuming, so it's kind of hard to tell when it happens that quick, but it was a big fish. Uh, I wasn't able to set the hooks properly because it happened right under my feet and I wasn't using the heaviest rod. Uh, plus these hooks are kind of, kind of flimsy. So uh, after a couple of head checks, she popped up, unfortunately. But that's the way it goes. At least we're able to prove that this super simple lure is uh, quite effective for what it was built for, even though we weren't targeting the fish species that we were looking for. Um, catching top water bass while they're sitting on the beds is uh, not the easiest thing to do in the world, especially not in a highly pressured uh, water just like uh, Turtle Creek. So uh, very happy with the results, obviously. Um, now, this was the first episode, obviously, of a calf cast catch. Uh, I would love as much, uh, as many reviews from you guys as possible. Um, negative or positive, uh, let us know what you think of this new type of a video. Uh, we want to start off super simple to get as many people into lure building as possible. Um, and then slowly progress into uh, the more difficult lures and hopefully we'll, uh, do some stick bait uh, making and then catching videos as well. So uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, if you have any questions for the rest, obviously just leave comments. Um, again, let us know what you think. Uh, thanks for watching guys and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Cheers.